Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks to, to organizers and my colleagues who are present here to be here. Actually, I am talking of basic science, but I want to bring basic science to your clinical practice. Actually, my practice, there will be, uh, my presentation, there will be two themes. First, I want to focus that beta cell preservation should be an important objective of diabetes management. Because we see a patient in a clinic and we take care of glycemic control at that time or cardiovascular risk control at that time. We don't see his life after 20 years. You know, a patient with 30 years come with uh, diabetes mellitus. I say, yeah, I want to see your life after 30 years. Would you take insulin or something else? Uh, would you like to be on insulin for after five years? He say, no, no, sir, I want to be on oral. So let me let us have a long-term planning. So long-term planning in diabetes, not only cardiovascular, microvascular risk reduction, but beta cell preservation. Secondly, my own work has come to a conclusion, and data is emerging from other uh, publishers, uh, public investigators, that your beta cell dysfunction is immer, uh, mirror image your adipose tissue dysfunction. So while treating patient for beta cell preservation, consider preservation of your adipose tissue function. That's why I'm very much interested, and thank you, Dr. Sunil, for your talk preceding me, that Insulin can cause pre-adipocyte generation that can lead to big signs. Anyway, so beta cell dysfunction, nothing but adipose tissue dysfunctions, mirror image. If that is in your mind, your diabetes management criteria, objectives, strategies will change. And your patient will come after 10 years and say, many patients come to me. I know one patient whom I prescribed, pyoglitazone, somewhere in 99 or 2000. He became Supreme Court judge and then big shot and everything. And he is still controlled on only two or three oral medicine after 25 years. He had CAD, triple vessel disease, bypass done in 99. He still is alive. So paying attention of these biological of disease is very important. Anyway, let me go fast now. Where to scroll here? Yeah. My agenda is the role of beta cell dysfunction in diabetes, pathobiology of beta cell dysfunction, effect of current anti-diabetic therapies, clinical trial evidence, Ray hope some drugs are in pipeline which will regenerate beta cells. You know, what is the role of beta cell dysfunction in diabetes mellitus? I want to tell you, a patient come to your clinic, you know, he's wo jula jula hai, between dysfunctional beta cell and good functioning beta cell. Because beta cell mass is different thing, beta cell function is different things, if patient is gaining weight because of lifestyle factor, he is lucky he may have good beta cell function and beta cell mass, he may not develop diabetes. Once he go down in this uh, graph and he is getting declining beta cell mass and function, he become diabetic. So this switch between beta cell function is very important component of your treatment. Now natural history of diabetes, we always talk in terms of rising glucose and rising insulin resistance and rising insulin levels and declining insulin levels. But what more important I want to point out here is there is a decline in beta cell function which starts many many years before your diabetes is diagnosed. So differentiate between these three things. Be be insulin secretion is different thing. Your beta cell mass is a different thing and beta cell function is a different thing. Because beta cell function has its own biology and that you need to understand and treat accordingly and your therapy should be directed towards that. Now pathophysiology beta cell at genetic level. You know diabetes is a genetic disease. We believe insulin resistance is primarily come and then beta cell dysfunction come. But we generated, you know, we did GVAS for diabetes. We discovered genes for diabetes. We looked for their network. Actually our strategy is to look for gene network. When I look through the gene network of your diabetes mellitus, I find that most of them were ex expressed in your adipose tissue. This paper published in 2013 and rated as one of the top five papers from India by the American Asian Advanced in Science Media had. And that they realized that time, and now I realize my own work that genes showing association with beta cell functions are the genes, they are functional, they are active, they are enriching the pathways of adipose tissue dysfunction. That's why I say, Preservation of beta cell is basically preservation on improvement and enhancement of adipose tissue dysfunction. I will now detail of this paper because this is complex science biomolecule paper published from my own group, my own paper. But remember, beta cell dysfunction is nothing but adipose tissue dysfunction, mirror image. Now, pathophysiology beta cell dysfunction at physiologic level, you know, it is, it is basically free fatty acids and glucose. They are the detrimental molecule for your beta cell damage. If you understand this, all your strategy should be directed on not only glucose, but 
three fatty acid also. Unfortunately, we miss this point. Inflammatory, inflammatory uh, mediators, they are damaging our beta cell. GLB is one of the mechanisms, prostaglandin another mechanism, and beta cell final destruction or final uh, dysfunction pathway include an inflammation, endoreticulum stress, metabolic oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, amyloid, and all these things are there. But they're all basically consequence to hyperglycemia, high free fatty acidemia, and adipose tissue inflammation. So these are the pathways. And GLP is one of the modulator of this mechanism. This is not very important. What more important is your free fatty acid, which is around your beta cell, and your glucose around your beta cell. So one more point I want to point to. If you go to cell biology, beta cell dysfunction doesn't mean it is dead. Very important. Insulin is being secreted in a good amount doesn't mean your beta cell is normal. Your beta cell may be dysfunctional. It is stressed and secreting more insulin to take care of insulin resistance. And in the patient who requires insulin, don't believe all cells are gone. There may be beta cells are dysfunction. Last are very important, your beta cell may be transdifferentiated into your alpha cell. It is having a detrimental role. So your therapeutic strategy should be to redifferentiate into beta cell. And strategies are being developed to that. And same time, you have to make it functional by some strategies. I will talk about that in the next few slides. Early intensive metabolic control and beta cell preservation. I think there are so many evidences in literature. In vitro, take beta cell out of glucose and fatty acid. They become normal in a diabetic patient. Intensive, uh, similarly, fatty acid control by any means that beta cell become normally functioning. There are so many trial evidence. Even bariatric surgery, what it does, it reduces your free fatty acid flux. Your SCP max, that reduces free fatty acid flux. Even your intensive glycemic control with insulin, they all actually enhance beta cell function. So never presume that patient who's, who is requiring insulin, the beta cells are dead. They can be revived. And that should be an important component of your treatment. Now, intensive insulin therapy, intensive lifestyle management, and intensive exercise. I can go through these slides a little fast. You know, 10% weight loss, beta cell function will enhance like anything. Your intensive, intensive physical activity, that will enhance beta cell function. So always keep in mind, even patient who is on insulin, oh, I want to improve your beta cell function. Okay, sir, I have no insulin. No, 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 I will improve it. You will be having better glycemic control because your natural beta cell will supplement your external insulin. We have a discussion regarding in the previous discussion that this insulin is better work. No, everyone is unique. And everyone changes every moment of time in his life. And that should be a very important component of your thinking while managing a patient. So early intensive metabolic control, there are cell biology evidences, there are clinical trial evidences that in early initiation of insulin for two weeks. This is a very important message. If somebody comes to a diabetes newly diagnosed with insulin, doctor, I want the best treatment. Or do you say, doctor, uh, person X, Y, Z, I will treat you with insulin for two weeks, intensive control. You may not require insulin throughout your life. Or you will require it after 5, 10 years of when otherwise expected. Insulin is the best molecule after lifestyle intervention to enhance your beta cell function. And that should be an important part of your prescription. Only two weeks of insulin, not throughout the life, will protect the patient from insulin therapy for the life. Similarly, uh, I think I can omit these slides. Yeah. Now coming to... What are the effect of other drugs we used in the management of diabetes on beta cell, fun uh, beta cell function, beta cell biology? I am not saying secretion. Here it is very interesting to note that, you know, beta cell apoptosis is best prevented by metformin. You know, we always think metformin is insulin resistant drug. It acts on the biology of beta cell. It causes, reduces uh, uh, ER stress. It actually is decentral human pancreatic by high glucose, decentral done by this medicine, and ADP A2 ratio are changed, and beta cell biology improved with metformin. Lipotoxicity is taken care by metformin, and metformin acts on beta cell directly, and all pathogenic mechanisms are plugged by metformin. So metformin we give not only for the purpose of insulin but for the purpose of beta cell biology improvement. And that should be a very important component of your, or strategy of your treatment. And unfortunately, sulfonylureas enhances beta cell aptosis. 
the common general practice newly diagnosed diabetes start glimmy bright metformin i think that is killing the beta cell of all our patients so my suggestion in general practice is please don't start with metform sulfonylurea at the diagnosis of diabetes or as a second line medicine even if it's cheap or not your other options on the contrary your pioglitazone enhances beta cell function and that is a very good medicine for that purpose i can economy the slides and you have this uh, uh, this uh, adopt and study data also there now glp1 analogs and dp4 inhibitors there are so many mechanisms are there and there are so many studies in literature they say that in insulin secretion i am not worried about insulin secretion my patient that is always there but i am worried about beta cell biology and beta cell functional cell biological preservation beta cells will be stress free should be free from apoptosis processes as well as your er stress and oxidative stress and all these things fatty acid damage so there is a hype of oh, glp1 glp1 analogs and these for beta cell preservation beta no that is not true and in fact whatever improvement with your incretin based therapy it is temporary it is not permanent and i will tell you that does not improve beta cell biology that's why i am coming to the point that can deteriorate beta cell function be naturally diet to be halted current therapies you know individual high risk of diabetes metformin pioglitazone glp1 receptor agonist dp4 inhibitor useful improve beta cell function halt the delay of t2 development even though most studies effect appear to subside when these drugs are withdrawn you know we say it enhancing beta cell function because enhancing insulin secretion this is wrong this is a temporary phenomena because in the beta cell has some capacity you are taking more insulin out of it you are putting more stress on that only act now data have shown that beneficial effect of beta cell response are high largely dissipated one year after withdrawal of pioglitazone but net diabetes prevention effect persists so pioglitazone is the only medicine after insulin which effect of which on after metformin persist even these drugs are withdrawn not for incretin based therapies similarly early diabetes it is basically insulin that is the most important it is metformin it is your pioglitazone if whatever positive effect of incretin based therapy it is temporary so early diabetes your focus should be beta cell insulin resistance preservation focus should be metformin pio and insulin short term insulin not permanent insulin of course short term insulin and even patient who had improvement with itt improvement was enhanced by metformin so metformin and insulin and pioglitazone are best medicine for enhancement of beta cell biology and function now long standing diabetes you know in long standing diabetes metformin and insulin still works to enhance beta cell function you know sometime you are very careful your long standing diabetes you can bring back off insulin by and this is my practice so after all i am also a practitioner <laughs> in evening so when patient long standing diabetes uncontrolled sugar regarding 40 60 units of insulin all these things are there i intensely focus on adipocentric mechan therapies pioglitazone metformin intensive lifestyle modification and gradually reducing the insulin doses and i am telling you many patient insulin was stopped and they are healthy of course sgl2 to inhibitor doesn't work on beta cell function but they enhance by reducing their weight they, they are also working and i am telling you now one more experience of my own if i compare pioglitazone with your uh, sgl2 inhibitors weight gain in and loss in other your beta cell preservation is better with your pioglitazone so these are very important practical points a canagliflozin of course as a therapeutic option has some impact on beta it can be given to irrespective of beta cell function there are some data improvement in beta cell function was seen with this uh, your canagliflozin and adding canagliflozin to triple therapy improved beta cell function by 18% but did not reduce its significance so canagliflozin doesn't enhance beta cell function that is very important now coming to ray of the hope because type 2 diabetes i told you it is basically beta cell function mirror is the adipose tissue dysfunction if patients beta cell are not functioning properly they might be dysfunctional rather than dead even the beta cells are dead when a patient with long standing diabetes doesn't respond at all to whatever strategy we presume the beta cell mass has been drastically reduced or it even it cannot be de differentiated back to beta cell from alpha cell what is the ray of hope can we regenerate can beta cell be proliferated 
you know insulinoma you know insulinoma benign tumor and lot many biological studies on insulinoma cells and cell lines and that raised a ray of hope for therapies for regeneration of beta cells new beta cell will grow itself within the pancreas this is the one of the reason i never venture for your islet cell transplantation i venture in field of biology cell biology molecular biology never venture in this 10 uh, uh, years ago in your islet cell transplant i know there are different stories are coming up and not only so many drugs in pipe line that enhance your beta cell function the prostaglandin receptors modulation is very important component of beta cell modulation dyrk1a inhibitors induce adult beta cell replication you know these they will change the scenario in future because if you take care of insulin resistance or adipose dysfunction by your glitazone like medicine diet control exercise and your uh, this um, sgl2 whatever therapy you do it if you can regenerate your beta cells and there is a very good you know animal model data beta cells new cells are coming up they are growing in number they are secreting insulin they are responding glucose so this is the future so conclusion is that hopefully i am on time true anti diabetic drug should be able to halt or restore beta cell function that should be very important objective of your treatment because you want patient to come after 5 year 10 years also because this patient make you popular also so i consulted ex doctor 10 years ago he said ki you will not require so next any because i am planning in such a way and he said 10 patient oh after mathus treatment helped me a lot insulin metformin pyoglitazone glp agonist depo inhibitor exert benefit treatment on human beta cell in vitro beta cell pro survival effects in vitro are not mirrored by durable drug action in vivo excepting for pyo and to some extent metformin and your insulin in pre diabetic newly diagnosed diabetic beta cell function is restorable with intensive therapies particularly insulin glp1 analog receptor agonist but not sustained with glp1 receptor agonist or dp4 inhibitor so your in early initiation of insulin for 2 weeks that is a wonderful strategy for the life of patient after 20 years rave hope drugs are in pipeline that can regenerate beta cell thank you very much